welcome to another edition of Auto Geek Show Car Garage here in Stewart, Florida. I'm your host, Mike Phillips, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Cyclo Polisher to remove swirls and scratches and then polish the paint to a high gloss finish. The Cyclo Polisher was introduced in the early 1950s, and because it's safe for all paints, it's perfectly suitable for today's modern clear coat finishes. The Cyclo Polisher is unique in that it uses two counterbalance heads which orbit in a random overlapping motion that duplicates fine hand polishing. These dual buffing heads operate in a synchronized motion which reduces vibration while providing a well-balanced tool that won't generate heat and this ensures you won't burn the paint or instill swirl marks. These tools are built to last and are for the most part indestructible. They can be used for polishing cars, trucks, and SUVs, as well as motorhomes, boats, and just about anything made from polished aluminum, like Airstream trailers, aluminum tanker trucks, and aluminum aircraft, all without instilling swirls. The Cyclo can also be outfitted with brushes for cleaning carpet, fabric, and even leather surfaces. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the proper techniques for removing swirls, scratches, and water spots, and then how to polish the paint up to a super high gloss, perfect for applying a coat of wax or a paint sealant. While the car may look really nice in the garage setting, let's drive this car out and get an accurate evaluation of the true condition of the finish using bright sunlight. When the car is in the garage, a lot of times you can't see these swirls and scratches. It's only under bright light conditions that they're revealed to your eyes. Now, if the sun isn't available, you can always use a Brinkman Swirl Finder light. The Brinkman Swirl Finder light will also reveal the swirls and scratches to your eyes in a garage setting. As you can see, with the sun overhead shining down on the paint, it's easy to see all the swirls and scratches that are instilled throughout the entire finish. Now, let's go ahead and pull this car back into the garage and I'll show you how to remove these swirls and scratches and restore a show car finish. Before I show you how to remove the swirls, let's take a moment here to look at the Cyclo Polisher and how it works. Now, after you remove it from the box, you're going to have to put on these rubber boots that have a hook and loop interface. And these go right on the buffing heads right here. I've already installed the rubber boots to this polisher. And what that's going to enable you to do is switch out and use different types of foam polishing pads that also have a hook and loop backing on the back of the pads. And these would just attach just like that. You want to center them up and get them as true as you can. Just like that. Now that you've seen how the pads attach to the polisher heads, let's take a look at the rest of the tool. There's a forward handle here, there's a handle in the rear, and just in front of the handle is the on and off switch, so you can easily turn it on or off with the flip of your thumb, just like that. And it's important to remember, whenever you're machine polishing, to always take the cord and throw it over your shoulder. That way when you're polishing, you won't drag this up and down the side of the fender, possibly marring the paint. So that's the polisher. Now let's take a look at the pads and the chemicals we're going to use today to remove the swirls. Today we're going to use a two-step approach to remove the swirls and scratches and then polish the paint to a high gloss. Now in order to do this, we need what's called a SMR. That stands for Swirl Mark Remover. And for this step, we're going to use the Wolfgang Total Swirl Remover 3.0. And when we use this product, I'm going to use what's called a light orange cutting pad. Now, after we remove the swirls and scratches, the next thing we want to do is we want to polish the paint to a clear high gloss. And for that, we're going to use the Wolfgang Finishing Glaze. And when we switch over to the Finishing Glaze, we're also going to switch over to a much softer pad. For that, we're going to use these blue polishing pads. So let's go ahead and get busy. The original paint that came on a 1966 Mustang was what we call a single stage paint. And that could be either a lacquer or an enamel. Now this Mustang's been repainted and now it has a base coat clear coat finish. Just like modern cars, trucks and SUVs. As you saw when we drove this out into the sun, the car's completely filled with swirls and scratches. So what I want to do before we start is I'm going to take some painter's tape and I'm going to tape off a section right here so when we're done polishing one side of the car we can look and tell the difference between before and after. And I think you're going to be amazed. Now that we've got a tape line down here, let's go over the tips and techniques for using the Cyclo Polisher. 
Okay, I've already got two cutting pads already on the buffing heads and ready to go. So the next thing I want to do is I want to grab my swirl mark remover. I'm going to shake this up. I'm going to put some part right on the face of the pad. And for this, you can uh, put a circle of, or a circle bead around the face of the pad or an X pattern. I'll just use an X pattern to start with. And before I turn this on, I want to go over the proper technique for actually moving the polisher over the paint. There we go. Okay, as you can see, that's an X pattern. That's plenty enough part to start polishing. And again, before we ever start polishing, you want to put this cord over your shoulder. And that way, it won't drag up and down on the paint itself and possibly mar it or even scratch it. Now, when we go to start polishing the paint, what's real important is, to, is three basic things. One is to use a slow arm movement. A slow arm movement is how fast I move the polisher over the surface. Or in other words, how fast I'm moving my arm which is holding the polisher. The next thing is the amount of pressure we put down. With the cyclo polisher, you don't really need to apply a lot of pressure, just a little bit more than the weight of the machine. And then the pattern we want to follow is an overlapping pattern. We want to overlap our passes by about 50%, and that'll ensure we completely remove the swirls over the entire surface. And the first thing we're going to do, though, is when I turn this on, is I'm going to spread my product out over the area I'm going to work, and I'm going to slow the tool down and start making my overlapping passes. And that will look just like this. Okay, I have my product spread out over the area I'm going to work, and this is about a 20 inch by 20 inch square area. And when you're removing swirls, you don't want to tackle too big of an area, you want to focus on a small area and kind of break the car up into small sections and then remove the swirls, and as you finish one section, then move on to another section and overlap a little bit into the previous section. So now that my product's spread out, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start working this section and remove these swirls. Overlap by 50%. I'm gonna overlap again by 50%. I'm gonna do one more faster. Now I'm gonna go back in my first direction. I'm just gonna continue to follow this pattern for about five to six passes. And it's important whenever you're using this polisher to make sure that you hold these pads flat to the surface. You don't ever want to tip this thing up on an angle. And notice how slow I'm moving the polisher. You don't want to get this thing a moving like this, because that won't do anything. So a nice, slow arm speed. And I'm going to follow this tape line real carefully. That way there'll be a very strong difference between the before and the after side. Okay, I'm going to make one more pass. And we're going to wipe off. And we'll take a look at the results. Okay, and before I lift this machine off to put the paint, I'm going to turn it off, then lift it off. Otherwise, you could throw splatter everywhere. You'll have to put the polisher down and start wiping the splatter off, and that's not any fun. We're ready to wipe off the residue, and to do that, I'm going to use a clean, soft microfiber polishing towel. Now, whenever you go to remove the residue, what you want to do is you want to take your microfiber polishing towel and fold it four ways. This will give you eight sides to wipe with, but it'll also give you some cushion to spread out the pressure of your hand.